Hello, students. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good Hello. Evening. Hi. How are you today? Good evening. Hi. Welcome to our English class. It's actually a great pleasure to have you here. Ready to uh, start part of this activities that we have here today. And also, I just want to congratulate you because um, I know that most of you, you know, are working or going home. And this is a great, a great effort. But at the same time, we'll be rewarded soon, especially because we have main goals to study English. And um, yesterday, we were having a great time. And also, we could develop some exercises and we had um, a good time in the class. I know that there are some of you that are coming home right now. So I hope that it could be challenging, but let me tell you that it's a great opportunity. So let's start today the class. And before that we start, I would like to ask you what they were studied yesterday. What do you remember? Uh, what do you remember we studied? Study city, really. Okay, we're talking about cities. What else do you remember, guys? I remember we studied uh, adjectives and adverb, adverbs. Adjectives and, oh, adjectives and adverbs, yes. Adver adverbs before adjectives. That was the main point of this um, class. And today we will continue working about this exercise but something important that I want you to, to do is uh, to go back to adverse um, before I did because the, the class was wasn't concluded um, because of the time. You know, the time goes so fast that we started and suddenly, you know, it's uh, 10 and we are like, oh, my God, it's going to be the time. So let's let's uh, finish the class. So, you know, it's uh, very challenging. But let me show you the presentation of the class today. And I would like to ask you, are you ready? Yes, you're right. Excellent. Music to my ears. Okay. So let's see what happened here with this class. Oh, can you see the presentation? Yes. No, no. no. Okay, so oh, Oscar Antonio says that he's going home. So be careful, Oscar. Okay, so let's see what happened. Okay, let's change the slide. Okay, what's the topic? Who wants to help me to read the topic? Conjunctions. Yes, conjunctions. We will uh, discuss today. Uh, some details about that. And um, let's see. This is the topic. And yesterday we were studying um, a little bit about uh, adverbs before adjectives. This topic is pretty easy. Just giving a short backup related to the previous topic, we we're saying that adverbs can be used to modify an adjective or an entire sentence. When modifying an adjective, the adverbs immediately precede us. Particularly hot weather, recently re-elected president. So we were saying that we use adverbs to modify adjectives. When we use adverbs and adjectives, we emphasize something specifically about a sentence. Look at examples that we read. Uh, San Juan is really nice, very big. It's not very expensive. It's too noisy and it's too crowded for me. Uh, it's a really nice city. It's a fairly big city and it's not a very expensive place. Let's see uh, the, the meaning about this one. Um, ¿Qué significaba really? ¿Qué, ¿Qué significaba la palabra really? ¿Quién, quién, quién me dice? ¿Quién? Realmente. Realmente? En realidad. Ajá. En este caso, para nosotros sería realmente porque hace la función de un adverbio. Entonces, eh, vemos acá que dice fairly. ¿Qué era fairly? 
bastante. Bastante. Entonces decíamos fairly and also big. Bastante grande, right? It's fairly big. What about very? ¿Qué significaba very? Muy. Muy and expensive. It's like, for muy. example, muy, muy bien. Por ejemplo, yo digo, oh, I have a cell phone. Wow, this cell phone is great. And, oh, this cell phone is expensive. Sabemos que es costoso. Pero cuando utilizamos el, el very o utilizamos un adverbio, este nos enfatiza algo mayor. Entonces ya no digo, oh, it's expensive, sino que digo, it's very expensive. Ya no es costoso, sino que es muy costoso. Entonces ya ahí nos modifica el adjetivo para darle un énfasis. So that, uh, one, that is one of the, the main point of this. Okay, so let's see the next part of this one. And we have also extremely, very, really, pretty, fairly, and somewhat. And we had to um, try to match the following sentences. It says, match the equations with the, with the answers, then practice the conversations. Look at the first one. What sales like? Is it an interesting place? Do you like your hometown? Why or why not? What's a Sydney like? I'd never been there. Have you ever been to Sao Paulo? And also you can see the equations. And what you have to do is to check the possible answers according to the equations we have here. So we have four possible choices, A, B, C, and D. And I will help you to read the first one. Oh, really? Oh, it's beautiful and very clean. It has a great harbor and beautiful beaches. Letter B, yes, I have. It's an extremely large and crowded place, but I love it. It has excellent restaurants. Letter C, yes, it has amazing shopping and the people are pretty friendly. And letter D, no, really. It's too small and it's really boring. That's why I move away. So what I want you to do, guys, is try to match uh, the two equations for each number with the possible answer. So you had to select the best choice for each one. For example, what sales like? Is it an interesting place? You had to look for between the choice A, B, C, or D. That's what we had to do. I will give you a couple of minutes to think about what questions could match with the possible answers we have in the right side. Okay, so let's start today. And also remember that you had a freedom to ask questions if you like. And I want to ask you, it's that clear, the exercise? Yes. Yes, it's clear, awesome. Okay, yes. I will give you two minutes. After you finished, you say, teacher, I finished, I concluded, so we can check the possible answers together. Okay, let's go.
Okay, almost ready? Ready or not yet? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, thank you. Someone else that, who is ready to? S someone else that is ready to? We have one ready. Yes, I am ready. Oh, you're ready too. Thank you. Someone else? I'm ready. Yes, I read. Excellent. All right. So let's um, uh, socialize the answers together so you can help me if you have also questions or uh, you had afraid not to do it. Let's see the first part. And it says, um, what's sales like? Is it an interesting place? Um, what do you think would be the possible answer? Let us see. But the answer, um, yes. The answer could be yes. It has amazing shoppings and the people are pretty friendly. Yes. Letter D. Okay, maybe letter D could be a possible choice. Uh, what sales like? I mean, I don't know. Think about it. Also, some, some sentences could match. Let's see what seals like. It's an interesting place. Not really. It's too small and it's really boring. That's why I move away. So let's see if that could match. Okay. Um, number two, do you like your hometown? Why or why not? Oh, really? It's a beautiful and very clean. It's a great harbor and beautiful bridge. Mm, you say letter A. Yes. Okay, so it says, oh, really, for the number two. I think there is another one that we can match for the number two. Number number one match with this letter C, and number two match with letter B. Uh, do you like your hometown? Yes, I have. Um, it's extremely large and crowded place, but I love it. It has excellent restaurants. Oh, there is a possibility. Yes, uh, David. Yes, uh, David Roberto. Okay, okay. For me, it's a little B. Number two is letter? B. Letter B. Uh, do you like your hometown? It says, yes. Uh, I have. Yeah. Mm, in this case, I have is related to uh, present perfect. Uh, me responde con I have. En este caso, es la estructura presente perfecto. Entonces, busquemos otra opción para el número dos. Okay, okay. Letter B. What? Yes, tell me. Number, number two is uh, letter D. Uh, do you like your that hometown? Why or why not? Not really. It has, uh, um, it's too small and it's really boring. That's why I move away. Okay, it's a possibility too. Of course, why don't we, why don't we switch? We could do that. Let's see what possible chances we have. Okay, and what recommendations can we give for the number one? What sales like? It's an interesting place. Let us see. C, C, number one is C. Okay, so let's see for the number one. Uh, what sales like? Um, yes, it, um, it's an interesting place. Yes, it has amazing shopping and the people are pretty friendly. Number two, do you like your hometown? 
why or why not? Not really. It's too small and it's uh, really boring. That's why I move away, okay? So there is a possibility too for letter D. What about the number three? Let's see if that match with the possible answer. I consider letter B. Uh, letter B or letter, letter A? A, A? Letter, letter A. Letter B. A. Yes. Letter B. Because it's talking about a harbor that is in Sydney and also beautiful beaches that are in Sydney too. So the number three definitely that matches with uh, letter A. And the last one, have you ever been to Sao Paulo? Yes, correct. Yes, I have. Um, it's extremely large and crowded place. That's, that's okay. One second. So we can see here the possible answer. It has um, a great harbor in beautiful beaches. And you can see that all of them are correct. So congratulations. Uh, these statements match with the possible answers. And also we can see the examples about the adverbs before adjectives. Um, amazing, uh, pretty friendly. This is another one, really boring. So that's one of the then the ways. Okay, let's continue with the same structures because I want you to work with more exercises like this. And at the same time, we can practice and identify some possible answers here. Look at this. Match the equations with the answers. In this case, we will identify some possible answers. We are not attached to one answer for each one. Maybe one of the equations could match with, with the number two, with the number three, with the number four. So the most important is that we can identify the possible answers for each one. So I will give you a short time and you will do the same activity. You will try to select the question and the answer. Look at the first one. What's Samana like? Have you ever gone to Santo Domingo? Do you like Mexico? What's Nagua like? Have you ever visited? Do you like your city? Have you ever gone to Barbado? What's your hometown like? And we have seven possible answers like, yes, I have, I have gone there twice. It's fairly modern and big. Number two, it's a somewhat beautiful and it's really crowded in summer. Option three, yes, I like it. It's not too noisy. Number four, no, but I think the beaches are fairly good to swim. Number five, it's extremely boring and quiet. That's why I moved here. Number six, no, I don't. It's not too moderate and it's pretty dangerous. And the last one, oh yes, it's a tourist place in it's really interesting and the night clubs are great. So I will give you uh, some minutes to uh, analyze the possible answers and the possible equations too, and we're gonna try to match. En, en este ejercicio habrán algunas preguntas que pueda que coincidan con otras, pero nosotros vamos a tratar de buscar la respuesta que sea pues conveniente, okay? So I will give you some minutes, you can start, and if you have questions, you can ask and participate actively. Let's go.
Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Ready, ready, teacher. Yes. Okay, so ready. let's cool. That's great. Let's try. So you can help me with that. And we go step by step. What possible answers we could select for each one? Let's see. Um what or uh, what's Samana like? What possible answers we have? Number five. Number five. Um, it's extremely boring and quiet. That's why I move. Yeah, there is a possibility. Uh, another possible choice? The number three. Uh, yes, I like it. It's not too noisy. Yeah. Mm, number I, two. Number two. It's somewhat beautiful and it's really crowded in summer. Um, yeah, it could be two. There is a possibility too. Okay, so, well, I think match. Number two, oh, letter B. Have you ever gone to Santo Domingo? Number two, oh, maybe number six. Uh, have you ever gone to Santo Domingo? in somewhat beautiful and it's really crowded in summer. I think it's number one. Um, yes, I have gone twice. It's very modern and big. Okay. The, according to the context, you are using present perfect, so you use present perfect. Okay, there is a possibility too for the number one. Um, what else? And do you like Mexico? Mm, maybe number seven. Uh. Oh, yes. It's a tourist place. It's really interesting. And the nightclubs are great. So, yeah. number six. Yeah, number six. Um, no, I, I don't. It's not too modern and it's pretty dangerous. Okay. Also, there is a possibility to hear. Excellent. And let's go with the next one. Uh, what's Nagua like? Have you ever visited? Number four. No, but I think the fishes are fairly good to swim. Okay, it's a possibility too. Yes. Any other possible choice? Number seven. Number seven. Um, oh, yes, it's a trick place, a match, a possibility too. Uh, do you like your, your city? Do you like your city? I think number three. Number three. three. Number three. Okay, let me check. Um, do you like your city? Yes, I like it. It's not too noisy. Okay, yes, we can use it. Another possible choice? Number six. Oh, number six. Uh, do you like your city? No, I don't. It's not too modern and it's pretty dangerous. Okay. It's a possible choice too. And the next one, letter F. Have you ever gone to Bobardo? Number one. Number one. Okay. Yes, I have gone uh, there twice and it's very modern and big. Good. Another possible choice? It's okay. Uh, have you ever? Oh, yes, it's a tourist place and it's really interesting. The nightclubs are great. Yeah, there is a possibility to, to answer in this way. And the last one, what's your hometown like? Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two in, it's uh, somewhat beautiful and it's really crowded in summer. Okay. Yes, could be. Number Def five. 
Number five, two is extremely boring, quiet, and that's why I move here. Excellent. A similar choice too. Number five also could be a possible choice for this answer. Okay, so congratulations, you did it. Let's continue with the next exercise. So I want to ask you if you have questions before that we go on to the next part. No questions. No, no questions, okay? Okay, look at the following exercise. Adverbs followed by adjectives. Choose the correct sentences to make conversation. We had to read this statement and we had two possible choices. And uh, look at the number one. I feel safe in Chicago. So the possible choice is you're right, it's pretty safe. Or you're right, it's not too safe. Number two, it's a pretty exciting too, but it's a very beautiful and it's very beautiful. It's really hot in summer and cold in winter. It's very nice in the spring though, and it's not very nice in the spring though. Number four, and also we can check here the exercise. I'm sorry, sorry. And we go back, we go back. Okay. So I will give you this time to select the best uh, statement uh, between option A and option B. And you will click or do highlight the possible answer, okay? I will give you a couple of minutes and after that you will um, socialize the answers. Okay, let's go and good luck. If you have questions about vocabulary, you have the freedom to ask. Let's practice.
Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so let's see the possible answers for the first one. I need a volunteer for helping me to read the first one. Um, sorry, I could see. Uh, Rebecca? It's uh, number one, Bella. Uh, I yes. feel safe in Chicago. I think there is the letter letter A. You are right. It's pretty safe. Okay, it says you're right. It's pretty safe. Um, it's. Do you agree? It's the possible answer, guys. Yes, I agree. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes, because we are confirming. So the person says that it's it's saved. So he confirms, or the person confirms. And the possible answer is you are right. When you say you're right, the other person totally agrees that. So that's good. Number two, volunteer for number two. Dennis. It's pretty exciting too. And I consider the number A, but it's very beautiful. Uh, it's pretty exciting too, but it's very beautiful. What do you think, students? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's very beautiful. Okay. Okay, do you agree? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Because when you use but, you are contrasting something. In that case, instead of contrasting, you are confirming. Uh, you give an extra information, adding add in the statement. So the second choice, that's the best one. Okay, help me with the next one, exercise number three. Who wants to help me to complete this part? Who wants to read it? Um... Danny, uh, let's see. Blanca, Blanca, El Elena. Okay, the is mm, it's really hot in the summer, it's hot in the winter, it's not very nice in the spring cold. Um, what do you think, students? What could be the possible answer? Number two, it's not very nice in the spring cold. Okay, check the statement. For B, it's, it's very nice in the spring talk. In, uh, in affirmative, you, you're saying in affirmative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very nice in the spring talk. Exactly. So in that case, first, because of the context of the of the seasons. And the second one, the context says it's very nice in the spring, though. That will say in Spanish, aunque es muy bonito en este caso, en, in the spring. Que en este caso, para nosotros, eh, es como la primavera. Bueno, en el caso de los seasons. Pero es muy bonito en primavera. Es decir, it's very hot in summer, and it's cold in winter. But in the spring, it's very nice. So the best choice would be the first one. Okay, number four, volunteer. Number four. There are some nice museums, but there are always crowds. Uh, museums, museums. Museums. Yes. And you say always crowded. 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 Yes. Crowded. So you say the answer is the second one. Yes. Okay. Uh, what do you think, students? Uh, do you agree with the answer? Yes, I agree. The Next. answer. Okay. Yeah, so in that case, it says there are some nice museums, 
but they are always crowded. And that's right, because you go to a museum and you can find a lot of people taking photos, visiting different places and sites there. So I think the second one would be the best choice for that. Okay, number five, um, volunteer. Yes. Number five. There are great show. And so number second, they are too exciting homework. However. However. Okay. Uh, what do you think? I think that the first one is the correct answer. So the first one, the first one. Some of them are expensive. Well, well. Okay, however, I mean, there are, there are great shows. I mean, in general, there are, uh, so they are not specific. And you say uh, some of them are expensive, however. So the, the, the first one would be a good choice. Um, however, as we say, es como decir sin embargo. Sin embargo, algunas de ellas son, son costosos. Entonces, so we can also think about it. Pero también tenemos eh, too exciting. They are, eh, they are too exciting. However, sin embargo, son eh, tan emocionantes. Entonces, eh, ambas tienen un contexto muy importante. So we can check. Y recuerden también que nos, nos indica que tenemos que elegir el adverbio seguido por un adjetivo. Entonces tenemos um, two tan emocionantes. Entonces decimos, uh, y son, sin embargo, son tan emocionantes. Entonces decimos too exciting. So we are uh, checking this. And the number six. Uh, Kenny? Lake Michigan is pretty clean and it's really beautiful. So the first choice is great for you. Number one. Number one. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. So uh, Lake Michigan is pretty clean. So we have pretty and also we have clean. Bastante limpio. Entonces decimos, it's pretty clean. Bastante limpio. Eh, en cambio, la segunda es negative. Entonces, doesn't match. No, there is a contrast. Okay, so that the first one is a great choice. Congratulations for that. And we go on to the next part. And I would like to ask you if you have a question or doubt. Or about vocabulary or something else. No questions. No? No questions. No questions. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, great. Uh Blanca. Okay. Um, in the... uh, what do you say? Thought? Throat. 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 Uh, and ah. uh, what's the meaning about though? Or what? This one? Uh, yes. Okay. Ah, though in Spanish is like saying aunque. So when you say uh, it's pretty nice in the spring, though, it's like saying uh, aunque es muy bonito en primavera. Entonces vemos que se ocupa el though y esto lo vamos a reforzar también en un, en un tema que se llama eh, conjunctions. Es, de hecho, eh, tenemos though y tenemos however que son conocidos como conjunctions. Ya voy a explicarles un poquito acerca de los conjunctions. Ok. Teacher, however y sin embargo. Ha however, yes. However, however, ok. However. Y luego tenemos though, que es como decir aunque. Ok, ok.
Okay, um, let's check the attendant list. So I will be calling your names and you say present. So if you allow me one moment, please, to look for the attendant list. Okay, you listen to your name and you say present. Eh, Ada Agar Burgos. Present. Eh, Blanca Elena Melara. Present. Eh, Christian uh, Salatiel Molina. Christian. Present, present, present. Okay. Um, Claudia Lisette Velázquez. Present, teacher. Eh, David Roberto Aquino. Present, teacher, present. Eh, Denise Francisco Alvarado. Present. Elena Gabriela Jovel. Elena. Eh, Esmeralda. Isabel Martínez. Esmeralda Isabel Martínez. Eh, Gisela Emperatriz Cañas. Present. Eh, Héctor Iván Pérez Martínez. Present, teacher. Eh, Jos eh, Jocelyn Stephanie Mejía. Jocelyn Stephanie Mejía. Ke Kenia Vanessa Corbera. Present teacher. Marco Antonio Quijano. Present. María Elena Flores. Present. Oscar Antonio Ramos. Presente. Present. Ok. Eh, Rebeca Janelle Hernández. Vanessa Gabriela Hernández. Vanessa Gabriela. Xiomara Elizabeth Hernández. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Jessica Esmeralda Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. And Jocelyn Elizabeth González. Jocelyn. Hello teacher, I'm here. Um, who? Jocelyn. Hello? Yes, Jocelyn. Okay, great. Okay, let's continue with the next part of the class. And also we introduce the conjunctions. It's a very easy topic. There are uh, two types of conjunctions, but I will explain you the most valuable about the four of them we have here. So we have conjunctions. To start, I would like to ask you, do you know what a conjunction is? Do you know what a conjunction is? Okay, to explain you about conjunctions, a conjunction is a word. It's a word used to connect sentences. That's the function of a conjunction. Uh, connect clauses or sentences, or to coordinate words uh, in the same clause. For example, I could say, it, El Salvador is beautiful for the vicious, and the pupusas are delicious. So we have two sentences. The first one says that El Salvador is beautiful, because of the vicious and and is the connector is the conjunction because I join two sentences. Look at the first example. It's exciting city. It's an exciting city, comma, and the weather is nice. So we have two sentences. The first one is. It's an it's a exciting city. So we have a, a verb subject, the verb and the predicate. It's a complete sentence. And the weather is nice. 
it's another sentence. The weather is the subject, is is the verb, and nice is the predicate. So I needed to join two sentences. In that case, I use the conjunction and look at the second sentence. It's a big city, but it's not too big. So it's a big city is a sentence. And it's not too big is another sentence. And I need to make one sentence. So I can use a conjunction to do it. That's the that's uh, the function of a conjunction to connect clauses. Entonces, podríamos decir que utilizamos las conjunciones para unificar dos oraciones y darle un significado natural. Es una ciudad emocionante y el clima es bonito. Entonces, vemos que las dos oraciones separadas se unieron a través de un conjunction. Y, y esta está, and, and also but. But, en este caso, es un contraste, porque decimos, pero, es una gran, es una gran ciudad, es a big city, pero, pero, no es tan grande. Entonces, ahí vemos el contraste. Vamos con el siguiente. Tenemos though, que en este caso es aunque. Y decimos, oh, it's a big city and it's not too big though. Entonces, es como que dijéramos nosotros en español. Es una gran ciudad, aunque no es tan grande. Entonces, vemos ahí que está el though como un conjunction. Y tenemos la siguiente. It's a big city. It's not too big, however. Este however es como decir, sin embargo. That's the meaning about however, sin embargo. Entonces decimos, es una gran, es una gran ciudad, sin embargo, no es tan grande. Entonces, eh, vemos que en este caso tenemos though y tenemos however. Um, I would like to contextualize a little bit about this. Como sabemos, la gramática inglesa con la española son totalmente diferentes. Para nosotros, por un ejemplo bien claro es que la, algunas estructuras cambian en su posición en cuanto al español. Como cuando usamos el adjetivo más el sustantivo. A happy boy. A happy boy. Decimos, eh, si yo lo tradujera, dijera un feliz chico. Pero para nosotros es un chico feliz. Entonces, ahí, se, ahí hay un cambio, pero nosotros tenemos que darle el significado propio a las palabras en inglés. Tenemos que darle el contexto. Entonces, para los intérpretes, cuando están en una conferencia, ellos van a escuchar y van a interpretar a modo de que se pueda entender al 100% nuestro idioma. Look at the following example. Volunteers. Un voluntario que nos lea la, las, eh, los ejemplos. It's yes. an exciting city and the weather is nice. It's a big city, but it's not too big. It's a big city. It's not too big, though. It's a big city. It's not too big, however. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, because of the time, and we will try to uh, complete the exercise in the part B, we are going to try to, to use uh, the conjunctions, and in but, and in though, and however, uh, in the sentences we have here. So, according to the information given by English Corporativo and also in Safor, we will have class tomorrow. It's going to be at the same time. So, for that reason, we will have uh, to have the class tomorrow. And also, you can take advantage of working in these exercises. Um, I will um, check the answers in the first part of the class, okay? So because the time is actually, uh, the time has gone, so we need to sleep. <laughs> so I hope to see you tomorrow, guys. Uh, before that we conclude the class, I would like to ask you if you have a question or you have a comment.
um, or something that you would like to say. Okay, thank you, teacher. Good night. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank teacher. You, Good night. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Goodbye. Good day. Good day. You too. Tomorrow. Thank you so much. You too.